Aslak Holmberg uh, from the village of uh, Njörkan, which is in uh, the Tetnu River Valley. So that is the river that is today the border between Finland and Norway. And um, I am looking at the river as we speak from my home office. And uh, <clears throat> yes, as, as you mentioned, I'm from the Finnish side, so I'm looking at the Norwegian side from here. And um, yeah, I'm a fisherman. Um, I'm also a teacher, a politician, a bit of a scholar, uh, activist, whatever you name it. Well, um, I wouldn't say that it actually impacted all that much because, um, well, let's say for myself, the main subsistence activity is uh, salmon fishing. And um, by the time that the salmon fishing season started, um, um, they had actually managed uh, to make an agreement, uh, the Finnish and Norwegian authorities, that um, because the border was closed uh, pretty much until the fishing season started. So we were a bit anxious about how that will impact us because we will be crossing the border all the time uh, with our boats when we are fishing. But um, as I said, they managed to make an agreement that uh, it was allowed to cross the border as long as you didn't go to the shore. And that wasn't so uh, problematic then. But um, some impacts um, were like, um, let's say if, um, if somebody would fish together with a person from the Norwegian side, then it, it was um, um, not so easy to do because of the border uh, closures so um, that was one one impact uh, uh, that people had and, and like one um, uh, friend slash fishing colleague of mine his uh, traditional uh, spot to go uh, drift netting which is one of the uh, methods for fishing that we do in the springtime or early summer then his uh, spot where he usually keeps the boat and goes to do the drift netting, it's on the Norwegian side. And it wasn't so easy for him to cross there. So he had to stay stay on the Finnish side and, and it, it was not so convenient for him. <clears throat> but um, other than that, uh, I... I wouldn't say that it had so much impact on the on the subsistence uh, act activities here. Well, um, officially the the fishing spots for the um, let's say for the more permanent uh, fishing structures, by which I mean the weir and the set nets, then those are like the people who live on the Finnish side and who own properties on the Finnish side uh, because the fishing rights are attached to the properties then then those fishing spots are on the Finnish side of the river and and the border is um, the the deepest part of the river so then the the fishing spots of the those who are living on the Norwegian side uh, with the fishing rights then they have to fish on on the Norwegian side of the border and um, also that applies to drift netting so we we should be only drift netting on on the well eastern side of the deepest section of the river because that is the the Finnish side but uh, I, I mean, it's um, it's not so easy to draw the line in, into the water. So it's uh, the monitoring of it uh, is probably not so very specific, but it's like an estimate that, that this is where the border is and you are supposed to stay on on your own side of the border, so to say. No, actually, uh, let's say during the drift netting time, it's usually um, quite high level of water then. 
So then we are not usually even close to the deepest part of the river because we have to fish somewhere where the net actually touches the bottom of the river. But then again, sometimes the water level does uh, uh, go so low that we we are drift netting close to the um, deepest part of the river, but I would say that usually we we don't cross the the deepest part so so often. I can say from my own own part. Um, um, even though I don't have offspring uh, to take with me to the to the tundra or fishing, but anyway, it impacted my um, personal, um, let's say, how I spend my time here. Because uh, uh, usually summertime, it's uh, quite busy with different kinds of cultural events, and I'm uh, eager to go to this. But then now that there were no events, then I had to come up with other uh, ways to spend my time. So I was spending much more time uh, going to the tundra and fishing in the smaller rivers and and uh, trekking, uh, camping, like getting to know the nearby areas. So that was definitely some something that was um, um, quite a big change for for my usual summer that instead of going to festivals I went to to walk for 10 kilometers in the tundra and, and I got to know quite a lot um, the the nearby areas here so that was one impact for me. Our modern uh, traditional um, uh, cultural events, they are uh, different kinds of festivals. Um, mainly at summer times we have uh, um, festivals that are often, um, I would say that the music is an uh, important part of the festival or sometimes it is uh, the main, main part of the festival is music. But um, yeah, already at the springtime, all all the festivals were cancelled. So we didn't have any any events uh, uh, during the whole summer time. So of course that that's a huge uh, change. Um, and as I mentioned before, I usually I'm very eager to go to these festivals because they are important. Uh, um, gathering places, uh, quite a lot of my friends, I only meet them uh, once a year in this festival, so they're very important um, gathering places and socializing places. But I went to the Tundra, which was not so social because I was mainly there by myself. So that was, uh, that was the impact on the cultural activities, that there were none. It's, it's hard to say uh, a wider estimate because I think uh, perhaps people uh, do not talk about these things uh, so so openly. But um, as I would uh, see that uh, people who live here in, in uh, what uh, some would say rural areas, then we are quite used to uh, living somewhat solitary lives. So as I've heard uh, some uh, friends say that um, it actually had some positive impacts because they were socializing more with, um, with their immediate family and let's say your sisters and brothers and so on and not, uh, not spending so much time uh, traveling for work or, or visiting people from a bit further away. But the, the lives, lives were centered to the, to the nearby areas and um yeah so at least my my experience is that uh, it was not all, all that bad to stop traveling for work and and slow down and and spend more time at home of course some other people might have very different experience but uh, yeah actually i've heard many people say that it has been actually good <laughs> like you get you have more time to stay at home, you don't have to go to places and not so many people come to visit, <laughs> which is of course also a positive thing, but sometimes it's also nice to be 
uh, be at home by yourself. So quite a few of my friends have actually said that this has been pretty good for them. People who are artists, so they they are have been working with their art and I, I would say people who live here, they are quite used to um, coming up with ways to spend their time at home. So for many people, it was just a chance to do what they usually did, but without the uh, other other things coming in the way. Um, well, as I said, I haven't been working as a teacher now, but um, but um, let's say in in Otsayoka, which is the neighboring village uh, to my village, then um, they have this um, uh, cooperation with the school on the Norwegian side. So um, when the border closure came, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that the cooperation had to be halted. But uh, but then again, also all the schools were closed for quite some time, so nobody was going to schools. So of course uh, that means that education changed a lot when when kids were not going to school, but uh, um, they were studying online. So all of a sudden they had to transfer the whole educational system to to online platforms. So. That was quite a, quite a big uh, shift for sure. Yes. Well, um, um, I, I mentioned before about subsistence activities and how I, I experienced that it did not have such a big impact on that. But um, then again, uh, a lot of uh, the food uh, that um, this community uh, spends or consumes uh, these days comes from the stores. Um, and actually, the COVID didn't have uh, much impact on, um, on uh, the transportation of goods. So even when the border was closed, then, then uh, transporting of goods was still um, uh, possible. So that actually didn't change. But uh, what did have an impact um, was um, when people couldn't come to shop um, to the stores in my village, because um, as I said, I live on the Finnish side of the border and um, uh, many things are cheaper on the Finnish side, so people from the Norwegian side come to the stores uh, in my village. But since uh, that was not possible, then then that had actually quite a big impact uh, because they even had to close uh, the other store in the village. There are two like uh, grocery stores, but uh, the other one was closed actually permanently because of. Uh, the pandemic um, and then the the shop that remained open then um, well 90% uh, of their customers uh, didn't show up all of a sudden so that did have a big impact on the on the store and also they had a uh, lot, lot of things to figure out on how much products uh, do we need to get now and and um, quite a few times uh, the store sh seemed quite empty because uh, there were not so many things there to be sold. So I think uh, um, perhaps there was some impact also for the uh, for the ordering of goods to the store because um, let's say many times I went to the store and there was not a single bread <laughs> sold there. And I don't remember that happening before. So. That was uh, that was uh, something that impacted uh, our our food supply. Well, this uh, village it's um, about uh, two hundred people. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the people who who would come here they had to buy all their stuff from the norwegian side so for sure that had a positive impact on, on that side of the border 
Well, there was some support uh, uh, given to to small businesses, as I understand, like restaurants and and these industries that were uh, especially hard uh, hit by by the pandemic. So there was uh, some support uh, provided for for small small businesses. For sure, um, uh, the youth and elderly, um, the youth because the, there was no school, and um, and the elderly because um, um, for a few months um, there was a strong recommendation that um, people uh, over the age of 65 should not leave their homes and they should not socialize with others face to face. So for sure that had an um, uh, impact for, for a lot of elderly people because they, let's say, they were not, uh, uh, at least it was not recommended that they go even to the store or, or meet anybody. So I think socially it had a very big impact for them. Yeah, in uh, in Otsioka, in the neighboring village, there were six cases, but um, they managed to uh, stop the spread there, and we haven't had any cases since. I already mentioned uh, that the one of the grocery stores was permanently closed. Um, then also a lot of people here they live on the Finnish side but they work on the Norwegian side and um, it was so that the only people who work in so-called essential um, um, what's the word uh, professions like healthcare system then they were allowed to cross the border but uh, then there are a lot of people who uh, might have uh, temporary jobs working in non-essential professions so they were not um, it was not possible for them to go to work and that is of course a big um, big impact um, well from from my own part i can say that um, i i work quite a lot in uh, international um, uh, different international processes and i go to a lot of meetings but uh, all of those were cancelled so i didn't have any meetings to go to anymore so that did uh, impact my my usual uh, work routine quite a lot um and then tourism well um, i would say that the, the um, what we call spring winter season it was probably slower than usually because that was still when there were quite strong restrictions for traveling even the capital area uh, it was kind of quarantined from the from the rest of finland so people couldn't come from uh, from the capital area to have their holidays here but uh, then when summer came um, uh, some restrictions were eased a bit um, so people could travel within the country and um, and that actually uh, because people were not uh, able to go abroad so that meant that only the domestic uh, tourist uh, destinations were available so that actually meant that there were more tourists uh, here than uh, on a normal summer so it actually had uh, had a positive impact for the tourism at least for the summer season here yeah it's a lot of uh, sports fishing but also other um, hiking, as you mentioned, and yeah, people come here for the for the nature. But um, yeah, definitely the salmon fishing. It's a big. Uh, uh, it's one of the main uh, main things why people come here. Yes. So. Well, my personal lockdown started uh, in March when uh, it uh, became clear that all the international uh, meetings will be cancelled 
so that's when I I had to come home and uh, I was in quarantine for two weeks and uh, actually yeah that was when everybody was in quarantine for some months and um, yeah I think it was a timely move then because um, actually at springtime we didn't have any cases in in the community and it was only until uh, late summer that uh, we had the first cases here so yeah i think they were um, timely or at least they were not too late uh, the restrictions um yeah As I understood it, there were like two separate, um, um, like let's say one of the people who were, was infected was not connected to the five others. So that one person was a tourist, as I understand it. But then the five others, um, I believe they were locals and, and it was a local who was uh, uh, coming from the southern Finland here who, who had it. That's as far as I know. Yeah, one thing that we didn't touch upon yet was um, how the border closure impacted uh, the communities. Uh, other than I mentioned the, the working aspect, but also, I mean, the families here are often uh, uh, divided by the border, or let's say that we don't really pay so much attention to the border on a, on a normal um, set of, uh, or on a normal um, year. But um, but now when the border was closed and um, there was uh, you would have gotten a very big fine if you crossed the border, uh, except from the marked uh, crossing points. So let's say I'm used to just uh, going across here with the snowmobile or with the boat, but uh, that was not allowed. So um, well. Uh, I was not able to visit my friends on the other side and then uh, a lot of people many families they are divided by the border so let's say there was one father who lives here in the village and his daughter was living just uh, a few kilometers away but uh, they couldn't meet for many months because uh, the border was closed and yeah only people working with the essential professions were allowed to cross so that's something that changed uh, now when they closed the border again then it um, um, they made this uh, regulation that um, um, like the neighboring uh, municipalities uh, people who live permanently there they can go to the next municipality so i think this is a good uh, uh, good regulation and and they should have paid uh, um attention to the communities that are are divided by a state border also before so that's one one thing that i i would change but um, yeah as i said now we who live in the border region we can actually cross the border they changed the the regulations very quickly and i just heard actually that the norway is closing the border again but i do believe that uh, we will still be able to cross we who are living in the in the municipality but uh, yeah i barely can keep up to the restrictions because they change from week to week and even on a daily basis yes uh, for for the summertime it was open uh, i think a couple of months but uh, then it was closed again so that uh, only the permanent residents can cross to the neighboring municipality and um, and then it was opened again for everybody to travel that was i believe about uh, it was last week yeah and uh, but then they closed it again this week mm -hmm. so there has been a lot of shifts on this but but yeah we can still cross the border Well, in the beginning of the summer, that was uh, still when the restriction 
was enforced that um, um, we were not allowed to cross the border. But um, um, actually, I think uh, already when the fishing season started, uh, that was already when they had opened the border. So it did not have uh, such a big impact for that reason. But uh, now again in the late summer, um, when I was fishing there uh, in, in September, early September, then uh, the border was closed again, or at least uh, you were not allowed to cross the border except in the marked checkpoints. And you should have your identification and some kind of proof that you actually live in the area. So uh, I was not allowed to cross the border, even though if I was, I was fishing in the river. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I, I can warmly recommend uh, music as a pastime activity for everybody. I think that has been very good method for mitigating the long days spent at home. <laughs> But uh, other than that, I, I wouldn't really know what to say. I mean, people are quite used to living relatively solitary lives here in any case. So I think for many people, lives didn't change so much. Well, I mean, we've had, uh, it goes quite a long, long back in history. Um, so like the spanish flu it it uh, did uh, go through the communities here but uh, but i i am not aware of any any measures that were taken there or or if anybody was implementing those so mm, i i don't know that there was something um done that was learned in the past Something that uh, did change was uh, how I consider distance, how I consider traveling, because um, on a normal year I, I spend more than half of the year on the road. So a lot of kilometers come in in one in the course of one year. But uh, now that uh, well, when I had to come uh, home after all the meetings were cancelled, then I was literally in, in my home village for, for two months. I didn't even go to the neighboring village. And uh, quite often I, I, on a normal year, I go to, to Anar, which is like the bigger village. It's uh, like a two hour drive from here. But uh, after the restrictions came, then it seems so far away. <laughs> And uh, I've only been there, I think, three times uh, in the last uh, six months. And it used to be that I can just go there for the weekend just for the fun of it. But uh, it uh, it seems like uh, the distances uh, became much stronger or much longer. Because I, I barely go to the neighboring village, which is like half an hour drive from here. <laughs> I need some really good reasons to go even that far. But then again, I... Uh, on a normal year, I would uh, drive for 10 hours uh, to a cultural event that would be normal for me. But now all the distances seem quite uh, long. So I guess that was uh, <laughs> at least uh, for, for now something that I, uh, I learned that uh, you can actually spend uh, your time at home. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to travel so much, and, and there is a lot to see and do also here close to your home. <laughs>